Yo, doctor, where are you going? Going to Guitar Quackery. And in fact, there's an old Chinese proverb that says, all roads lead to Guitar Quackery, which is good news for this guy because I noticed he was walking in the wrong direction. Oh, excuse me. A guitar Quackery? Oh, Dr. Dan. Oh, you're almost here? Okay, good. Is that the new bass in your gig bag? All right, I'll tell him. Ah, that's Dr. Dan. Uh, so, before we uh, hop over to the shop, he's carrying a new bass, Donable. We're going to review it. Uh, there is a little problem, though. Uh, he did some work on it because, you know, he's like a little kid. He can't wait. So, he did some work on it, uh, but we'll take that into consideration. Okay, so welcome back to Guitar Quackery, where we're about to review a brand new Donable bass. <laughs> Guys, you know, you know Dr. Dan, right? He's uh, the bass player from uh, two bands now. Uh, Miasmatic Necrosis and Uniform. Uniform. You can talk louder. You got Sorry. the mic right there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he picked up this new bass. Look, Donable. What is it called, Donable? What model number, model name? It's the Narwhal. Narwhal. We're going to show you up close. Look, it's got a volute at the back. Uh, yeah, I really, really love this curve. Look at this curve. Okay. And this is a new axe, right? Exactly. The new one. Yep. For, for which one of the two bands? For both. Both. Okay. So, uh, miasmatic necrosis. So, you're, you know, this is a, a band that's uh, heavily influenced by uh, Frank Sinatra and Barbara. Mostly Sinatra, like Barbara Streisand. Mostly like early, early fifty okay. show tunes for the most part. Yeah. Right. Okay. A lot of do up and stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. You know me too well. All right, so we're going to have a, a close look at the base. Um, well, look at that. We have the uh, camera right here. So, and yeah, I got my phone. Uh, so, I am going to start. I'll show you the logo, Donable. This is it. And now, we look at it. Look at the fretwork. I think the fretwork is really good, right? What do you think, Doctor? Great. Yeah? It feels amazing. What are these pickups? They're the Dunnable pickups. So they make them? Uh, yeah, I think, well, actually, I think those are made at a factory, at another factory in South Korea, but are the Dunnable license pickups. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, tell me about the bridge. It's a high mass bridge. It's, uh, I love the set screw for the intonation. I love anything that like okay. makes things more rigid. Now this looks a little off, uh, the positions. Uh, we want to check that, right? You did this by yourself? Yeah, yeah, and weirdly enough, it seems to be working. Okay, so uh, the strings, tell me, those are not the strings it came with. <laughs> no, those are uh, D'Addario, the heaviest string is a 160. Uh, the lightest, uh, I think it's 160 to 110 80 to 65. And we tune it to G, C? G, C, F, A sharp. F, A sharp. Okay, cool. All right. So you already cut the nut slots for... I did. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't. I'm very impatient. I couldn't help myself. I, I told you we're going to do a review. I know. I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I, I told you we're going to re review their work, I, I and know. now it's your work. I know. I just couldn't. I was like, Man, I was so like, excited it's, it's when like, I got it. I just, I, I, I was, I just couldn't help myself. I was like, I have to. I have to. Like, hear it. like kids, right? Like kids. Okay. All right. So now it is what it is. So we. Want to look at the neck first? This is a, a trick I like to use. I place this right here. It's uh, 
what do you call this again? A stirring stick, right, from a coffee thingy, right? You can get these at a coffee shop for free. So now we look at this, we're focused on it. And as you can see, it is parallel to the body. So this means the neck does not have a neck twist. If I fake a neck twist, it would, I could put it at an angle. This is grossly exaggerated now, but uh, this would mean that the neck is twisted, which is not, okay? We have a truss rod um, here. Uh, it is a four millimeter. Do you know if it's dual action? It is. It is a dual action. And did you have to crank it up clockwise or counterclockwise? Um, I had to bring it uh, clockwise. Clockwise, yeah, so that's clockwise. good, right? Um, it makes it a more of a stable neck than if you have to resort to the counterclockwise option. Okay. And I'd like to see how you adjusted the relief. So, I don't typically look at, uh, you know, set up specs of a, a guitar or bass that comes from the factory. I'm sorry about the banging pipes. It drives me nuts. But we are going to measure to see uh, what we have on each side, okay? A straight edge here. Uh, I measured already. Uh, this is 16 one thousandths of an inch. Oh, I need to put this all the way here. Especially with those strings. Yeah, yeah. So here we have 16 one thousandths of an inch passing through. The next one, 18, does not. Okay, so 16 one thousandths on the base side. If we transfer it to the treble side, 16 does not pass. I mean, I can kind of push it through but not quite. But uh, 14 does pass easily. So I don't have a feeler gauge between 14 and 16. I'm gonna call it 15. So a little bit more relief on the bass side, which is actually good, right? Some luthiers do it intentionally to have a little more relief on the bass side. You know why? No. Why not? <laughs> uh, yeah, so that uh, it gives the string a little more room to breathe. Now, we cannot review the factory nut work because okay. Dr. Dan already filed it for his strings. Sorry. <laughs> okay, but we can look at his work. Here we have, uh, so that's your G, right? Low G string. That is it. Right? So I want to see if it's if it's nice and tight. Okay. Yeah, not bad. Let me uh, remove the string. Okay. So tell me, how, how did you file this? I basically stuck a piece of uh, 220 grit sandpaper onto a file that was for a 135 which uh, measured out to about 145 and I just kind of made it work with the 145 give or take okay so I'm gonna help you out with this one we're gonna fix it a little bit if you look at the monitor here um, let me sh point out what uh, we can improve on where's my pointy thingy did you see it? No. Ah, here it is. Okay, so we have... No, I just had it. Here it is. We have this uh, shiny surface here and shiny surface here. You see that? Mm -hmm. So this means that your G-string is trapped between uh, these two edges, right? Mm. So we hope that you didn't file it too low and we're gonna touch up the two sides. Maybe that will change the compensation over there on the bridge a little bit. Maybe, right? But it, it might affect it. I'd be curious to know. So let's put the string back 
And now let's look at what's the next string? The C, right? This uh, yeah. this is a C string. Okay, so um, so what I'm seeing here is a little bit of motion inside of the knot. You see here, mm -hmm. the string moves. So um, it's mm, a little tighter at the back end and not so much at the front end. Mm. But when I look at the height of the string, I'm just eyeballing it here. Why don't we show it? Zoom in a little bit. We show it here. I, I got height to work with, okay? So let's remove the string and look. So here, we're really removing, <laughs> reviewing Dr. Dan's work, right? And Oh, God. Yeah. And <laughs> were you using a microscope? I was not. You see? But we are using a microscope now, right? So, um, yeah, doctor, um, that's a little bit um, on the rough side here. So... Let's see what we can do. Okay. So worst case scenario, we change the knot. But I believe that um, this is a little wider here, although I can see that the string is pressing, pushing down here. I think the string is moving inside of the string slot a little bit, which might explain why this saddle is a little further away than I'm expecting to see it. If this is in fact shifted here, then it's a longer scale length. Oh, and the, by the way, it's a 35 inch, right? It is. It is. So you you want to tell us a little bit about about so, that? Hold on, hold on. So I've been wanting a 35 inch scale because of the low tuning. I uh, know that the fundamental low end of lower tunings can come out a lot better with a longer scale length. And I've been wanting to, uh, to try that out and test that out for a really long time now. And this is my opportunity to do that. And, and then you just found this base and decided I, that this is a good candidate for... This was the base I was looking into for a, a while. Yeah, this was exactly what I wanted in terms of uh, the 35-inch scale length and looks and everything else. Mm -hmm. kind of is the okay. total package. All right. So uh, you've had it for a week Maybe? Yeah, about a week. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's continue here. Oh, and by the way, I looked at the fret work. We're going to look at the frets through the microscope. It is fantastic work. Um, so, doctor, we're going to file this a little bit, see if we got enough uh, to work with. Other otherwise, we'll just change the knot, no problem. It's just uh, a knot, right? Now let's move on. Next one is F. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Let's see. See, that's nice and tight here at, at the front. Okay. Now let me remove it. Okay. So I would I would um, file it at the back end a little bit so that you have more clearance, right? You want to have like more of a funnel shape at mm -hmm. the back end so that um, you, uh, the string produces more pressure right here, right? At the takeoff point. And that's, uh, I'm sorry, what is something sharp tuned? Uh, that, well, that one is- D sharp, F? F, no. Oh, that one's A sharp. A sharp, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, you mind if I zoom in on your work? No. <laughs> We're going to zoom in on his work. Same thing here, doctor. So I would um, touch it up just a little bit at the back end for sure, right? Um, so that you have more clearance here, so that you have more pressure here. Makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you mind if we remove the strings to the side a little bit no. so that we look at the fretboard? Not at all. Where was this uh, shipped from? 
Uh, shipped from Los Angeles. Uh huh. Made in South Korea. South Korea. Okay. At the World in uh, World Musical Instruments Factory in South Korea. It's a really um, uh, amazing factory. We want to show you the fretwork using the fret rocker. So the fret rocker will show uneven frets if there are any two. Oh, here it is. Let's see. Nice. Look at that. Nice. Come on, can you make it rock? Uh, I'll, I, I can. I, usually, we, the strings are tighter for me to do that. Do Do we want it to rock? No. So for those of you, so I checked all the frets. They're good. Uh, what does this do? So if we had a high fret, I'm going to take a, a pick to simulate uh, the fifth fret being higher, right? I place it here. We would hear rocking. But we haven't found any uneven frets, so this fretboard is beautiful. Not only the leveling, but also the fret ends and the polish. Do you know if they do a level cron and polish or if they just consistently install the frets? So from what I understand, after the instruments are done uh, being assembled... Oh, 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 oh. After the instruments are done being assembled, yeah. they're sent off to the Dunnable factory and finished in the same place that all their custom shop uh, big guitars and basses are finished. S so they so. do what's needed, I guess, right? Yeah, I think, I believe so. Right. Uh, it's a small company? Yeah, yeah, it's a very small company. They've, they've only been around about 10 years, um, but have been able to really make uh, a huge, huge, huge steps, I think, in these kinds of... Uh, Kind of low tuned guitars and basses. I think they really mm -hmm. are uh, at the forefront of that kind of thing. Okay. This is what it looks like now. And we are going to scrutinize it even closer. Hey, we got a microscope, right? So let's look at the fret, the fret polish, finish, right? And the fret ends. I can zoom out a bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, guys, uh, this is uh, this is really good work. We don't see this even on many high-end guitars, right, Doctor? Yeah. Uh, this is really really good work. Uh, I can tell that someone used uh, a file to knock these two usually sharp corners, right? And they did a, a really nice fret and dressing uh, procedure. Yeah, it's not a sharp fret on. No, there. there's not a sharp fret on on, on this fretboard. Um, now, we are gonna see scratches uh, through a microscope. There is no such thing as a completely smooth surface, right? So when you use a microscope, obviously you're gonna see scratches. Mm -hmm. But these look like polished jewelry you know to to the naked eye uh the fretboard is ebony ebony, ebony. uh what else do we want to show do you know what the inlays are i don't i think they're I, they might be pearl but it's like a the, the the fretboard i can't get enough of it's so nice it has such a has such nice figuring and waving it doesn't yeah it's not just black, i noticed like i line. noticed this this it's a nice coffee color um, mixed with black. Now we want to look under the, f uh, what do you call it, control cavity. Make sure you don't push the uh, record button, you know, stop recording. Uh, you do the camera work now. We're going to remove this. I removed a whole bunch of screws already in the interest of time to show you. But this, um, cavity has a secret, right, doctor? 
that the, uh, we need to talk about, right? Indeed. All right, so uh, confession time. I know you don't want to say it, <laughs> but, you know, it's your doing, so. I did change the pickups. Okay, so he changed them, and then we changed them back. <laughs> yeah. So these pickups, he's experimenting with, uh, you know, different sounds. So these are the Dunnable pickups that they came with. Right, stock. right. These so we, pickups, which are excellent. we are looking at a combination of your work and the factory work, right? Yeah. Okay, so full disclosure here. So, so full disclosure, he, I, he changed the pickups. Only the uh, the neck pickup in this case was changed. Yeah. So this was the only pot that was altered. Everything else was how it was from the factory. Right, right, right. Uh, so uh, to me, this looks like really solid work. Even uh, this work is good. Do you know, guys, why? That was that was me. <laughs> that was I. That's my work. No, it's not your work. This one? I put it Oh, no, this, you did it. I, I, <laughs> I put it I'm back. I'm sorry, no, it's so good because you did it. <laughs> no, but your work was good, too. Oh, His thanks. work was good. Okay. Is there anything else that we're forgetting? The truss rod cover. I'm going to show you. It looks like this. It means what? DE. I actually don't know. Okay, it's a three screw. I always remove it for reviews, obviously. We know why, so we can see. Doctor, I think uh, we need to uh, plug it in and, uh, you know, do yeah, something with it. it. <laughs> let's make it roar. Oh, you changed something else, right? Oh, yeah, I did change the strap buttons. The strap buttons on there were excellent, actually. They were like kind of the the more oversized strap buttons. They're not like Gibson strap buttons or Fender strap buttons. They were really, really solid. It's just that I've been using Dunlop strap locks uh, since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And that's what all my guitars have always had. So I just, I, I put them on here as well. Yeah. Now it's a 35 inch uh, base. Some of our viewers might be worried they might not be able to find a case. What's your experience with that? So you'll definitely find a case for a 35 inch scale because the headstock uh, doesn't have all the tuners in one line. They're, right. Uh, it's a four by four, so it, it, it makes the headstock much shorter despite the fact that the base is an overall longer, longer right. and longer, longer length. Cool. I think we're done with the technical review. Now we're going to put it back together. Can you think of anything else? Oh, it's a bolt-on neck, right? We want to say that. Yeah, yeah, it's a bolt-on neck. So it's uh, a... Made of maple. The body is mahogany. Okay. Uh, the finish is... Um, what should we call it again? It's a black gloss. Black gloss. Do you know if it's uh, UV, UV cured? Or? I don't know how it's cured, no. Okay. It's pretty thick, right? Yeah. Let's look at the back. Okay. We want to show the volute, right? So this is a, a volute. It's a reinforcement. Do you know what tuners they use? Uh, from They were called lightweight open back tuners. Uh, uh, Dunnable, or I don't know if it's they're Dunnable, but they're clover shaped but they're they're on the website okay. i think it was just now, as lightweight open back. now that's smart right you know why well you can reduce, lightweight yeah, exactly you can reduce weight from the neck which will increase the kind of neck dive that a base right. like this would uh seem right. okay. like it would have but it doesn't right because it is longer and the horn is shorter but the tuners are lightweight Okay, so, oh, and it's a string through. We want to mention that. It's a string through with the option to also string it from the rear, right? Am I right about that? Yep. And okay. then, uh, the bridge also has these slots, um, which I really love, which a lot, I, honestly, every bass should have these slots for the strings because it makes stringing them up from the rear a lot easier, especially when you're using tapered strings or really large strings that don't want to kind of go through standard bridge holes. Yeah, 
Okay. So two options for stringing. Oh, and speaking of stringing, what strings are you using? Using the Dario strings. Custom set? A custom set, I buy, I, I, you have to, for a 35 inch scale to string through the body, you basically have to get a, um, a Dario super long. And that's what these are. These are Dario super long scale. The biggest one's 160. The lightest is 65, I believe. That's a 160? Yep. And that's 65? Yep. What about the other two? These is a 110 and an 85. Okay. So, because Dr. Dan is tuning it to G standard. G standard. Exactly. Doctor, I think we covered everything. Now let's play. Let's do it. There's only one reason why you're still watching. You like it. I know that. But it's not about what I know. It's about what YouTube knows. Because YouTube is going to recommend videos to you in the future. So make sure YouTube knows what you like. Click the like button. Thank you. You can also click the share button. Make sure you subscribe. There's ways to support this channel. You can join Guitar Quacker on Patreon. There's a link to buy me a coffee. Just click buy me a coffee. Thank you very much. And if you want to support YouTube financially, you can click the button that says super thanks. Yeah, I know. It sends money my way, but YouTube takes 30%. So, uh, do you want to see the bass in action? Okay, let's plug it in and make it rock. So what are we doing, doctor? Just demoing some of the sounds that uh, this bass is capable of. I want to stress that it's not just a kind of instrument based on, uh, you know, it's not like a contra bass where it's only meant for these really low notes. Uh -huh. Now, tell me, which pickup are we demoing first? This is the uh, just the neck pickup or the P bass pickup, uh -huh. the rock and roll pickup. Yeah, let's start with that, yeah. Um, but yeah, just so... Uh, People can understand that this is a bass that's capable of the same amount of, you know, uh, kind of extended range playing that people might be used to, you know. Can... All that stuff you yeah. can do on the instrument. once told me you don't actually play this in a no it's not something con, yeah this is really something I, I like just exercise right just exercise and things you just do for fun but like you if if you are the kind of player that is uh you know of the extended range uh kind of soloist style bass player i think this is as um as fit for that as it is for more kind of heavy music playing because of mm -hmm. the scale length of the instrument you really get a certain amount of clarity in all the notes mm -hmm. especially the lower ones that um is really hard to compare anything else to when you are using the kind of standard scale length instrument yeah. and you, you get the harmonics out of the out of these strings Right. Thing out of here, you know? So this is really not about the harmonics, but we know that the harmonics are present yeah. when you play yeah, the fundamental, a, right? This isn't a thud box in any way, you know, that it can be if you want it to be, but this is really a, a, a beautifully speaking instrument. Now, do you, uh, if you, if you put more attack on that G string, do you get fret buzz? Do you get any issues? No, the, the, the thing about, um, the reason why I use such an extreme sounding kind of uh, string gauge is so that you get kind of what you would still consider kind of normal string tension. So you get these low notes without a kind of floppy feel in your strings, which can really interrupt your playing and kind of get you out of the flow if your uh, strings are too floppy. But luckily this low G with this tension really just comes through and even the kind of a sharp and the uh and the a so that's a 160 gauge right 
is 160, yeah. You tried a 150, what did you try? I tried one, 135 and 145, and both of those were not really fit for the kind of tuning we were going for and the feel that I like to have. You know, right. I think I, I like to have a certain degree of rigidity in the strings. Let's but check. Nothing that I think is too extreme. Let's check out the other pickup. So this is just a bridge pickup, the more kind of for jazz bass aficionado. That clarity that you kind of are, are expecting out of a pickup in this space is there, you know, and it, I, I think that it, there's even a a degree of low end you get out of this style kind of split coil uh, humbucking pickup that sounds a lot better to me than a standard kind of J-bass pickup will. attack is really present. I'll ask you something. On your other bass, mm -hmm. uh, the output is wired straight without any any pots. You removed all that. You're going to keep all that on this one? You're going to modify it? What, what's uh, your plan? It, it really, I don't know yet whether or not I'm going to keep them on there. I kind of like um, preparing instruments for, for road use, and I like to kind of make them kind of a lot uh, a lot less flexible honestly when it comes to touring because I want them to be like a I kind of want them to be a one trick pony so that they work exactly the way I want them to but um, I've really been enjoying the tones out of uh, out of both these pickups so much that I'd, uh, I'm not really sure jazz pickup now mm -hmm. it's both together blend yeah blend of the two you get that kind of phase canceled mid scoop thing which i'm not much of a slapper but if that's your if what's what you're inclined to do this is pretty myself and try to play any red hot chili pepper. Yeah you can't you can't play copyrighted music. That's true. Uh, that's true. On this channel. Yeah. Yeah. Was this uh copyrighted? No. Okay cool. It's all original. That kind of phase cancel Yep, we're done. Yeah, Indeed. is it time to go to bed? I think it's time to go to sleep. <laughs> I know, life sucks. This video is ending so soon. It's only 33 minutes long. Ah, ah, what can I do? Well, I could make another video for you to watch. In fact, Dr. Dan plans on, you know, doing some modifications to this bass. So, if he ends up doing it, and if he ends up bringing it to Guitar Quackery, you'll get to uh, watch another video featuring Dr. Dan and his new bass, Donable. So, maybe you'll get a chance to see it again. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video.